In this video, we'll see how to use drawings to solve normal distribution problems. And there's a couple ways this could work. Let's take a look at this first example. Uh, we want to identify the mean in the problem, which is given in the 10.6, and identify what the normal or what the random variable represents, in this case, the uh, lifespan of a manufactured item. And then uh, try to figure out what the probability is going to represent as a picture. Let's go ahead and draw a normal curve. We don't want that to be real fancy. It's something that looks like a normal curve. That's good enough. And then we don't want to label it like we do with the empirical rule. We just want to put one line down the middle. And then there labeled the mean. So the mean was 10.6. Remember that this horizontal axis is your x-axis for your random variable. Going to the right is greater than, going to the left is less than. Now let's try to represent the uh, question on the graph. And it says, what is the probability it will last longer than 12 years? So the units there tell us they're giving us the value for the random variable, which tells us where to draw the line at 12. Now I'm going to draw a vertical line, and the important thing is that it's on the right side of the mean. So since the mean is 10.6, the vertical line should be on the right side. And you don't have to get real precise, just make sure it's somewhere on the right side. Now anytime you draw a line, you divide this into half, and you need to know which side to shade. We want to shade the right side, since it says in the problem, longer than 12 years. the area is the probability, this orange shaded area represents the answer that we're after. So, that would be probability. Now, what can you tell about this from the picture? Well, you can't tell a precise amount, but we do know that the total area under the curve is 1, 100%, and therefore the area on either side of the middle line is 50%. From the picture you can tell that the probability should be less than 50%. And that's important because a lot of mistakes will uh, give you answers more than 50%. Now remember if you're using Excel or the TI graphing calculator they typically want you to give them the area to the left. So, or they typically will uh, Excel, sorry, Excel will give you the area to the left when it uh, puts out the area. So you would have to then subtract from 1 to get this. The TI graphing calculator will find the area uh, to the right, just like you want. So for seeing how to put those together, um, take a look at the other video. Let's try another one, though. Alright, here we have probability that a uh, child's height is between 49.7 and 56 inches. So we'll uh, start this off the same way. Let's label the mean, which is 53.5. So these are the heights, and you, most of the peep children are about this height in the middle. Uh, as you go to the right, you get the uh, very tall children, but there's fewer of them. And going to the far left, you get a small minority of the really short children. Now, the problem says we want to find the probability that the height is between 49.7 and 56. So 49.7 would be somewhere on the left. and 56 would be somewhere on the right. And we want to find the probability or the area there between those. So, just like before, we'd use the 
normal CDF command in the graphing calculator or the uh, uh, norm dist command in Excel to find that probability for area. All right. Take a look at another one. This one, the mean is zero, so we're looking at the random variable being temperatures. So let's label that to be zero degrees Celsius. And we were actually told to draw the line, so we separate the bottom 71% from the top 29%. And we're trying to figure out where that line is drawn. So we're told what these areas are. If we want the bottom to be bigger than 50%, we need to draw the line somewhere on the right. And the question is really asking, what temperature is that? Where is that line drawn? All right. uh, percentiles refer to the percentage below. And it's saying that that is the uh, is it 71? 71 percentile. So we want that to be 71%. And you can see we are looking for a number that's greater than zero, and we know the area to the left is 0 0.71. You know, some problems would be given the area to the right, and you can always use the fact that the total area is 100% to find the area to the left. All right, let's do one more. In this problem, we're told that the mean is 7.1 inches, and we're looking at measurement of somebody's head. So 7.1 in the middle. So most of the people there in the middle with their heads about 7.1 inches. As we go to the far right, we have a very small minority of people with really large heads, and going to the far left, really small minority people with really small heads. Now, which are we interested in? Well, we're trying to design helmets so that we fit most people. Can't have it fit everybody. So we're going to cut off the smallest 1.1% and the largest 1.1%, say that we can't make helmets for them. So again, we're told the areas here, the probabilities, and I want to know where those lines are drawn. So we're going to draw these as kind of small tails. And you want to know where these cutoffs are. And you're specifying that you want this area to be 1.1%. Our graphing calculator and Excel both want areas to the left. So Finding this one on the left is not a problem because the area to the left is the 1.1%. But what if you want to find the maximum heights to use? Then you don't have area to the left, you have area to the right. But if you remember that the total area is 100%, then just subtract the 1.1% and you can easily find that the total area to the left, which includes that piece there, would be 98.9 percent. So using the 98.9 percent we could find the cutoff for the maximum value. Again these would be using the inverse norm or norms inverse functions in the technology tools. So these hand-drawn sketches are a good idea. It can show you what you're looking for and what you know and uh, help you get an estimate as to what the value should be. Again with these numbers I know the one on the left has got to be less than 7.1, and the one on the right has got to be greater than that. So make sure everything agrees with the consistency of the number line. And, uh, and good luck.